How's everybody doing? Uh, continue on in Revelation. And the second angel sounded. So now, now you got the trumpets. The seals continued. The seventh seal gave you the trumpets. Revelation 7, 9 gives you the removal of the church. What seal was that? I ran into something I never picked up on before. If y'all were there yesterday, the church is sealed and now it's removed. A great multitude, no man can number, they were before the throne. Salvation and honor and glory. Which seal was that? God's wrath is taking place. What seal is that? It's the sixth seal. Well, the seventh seal gives you seven trumpets. And it shows the church being removed again. Remember, at the last trump, we will all be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. The dead in Christ will rise first. Well, they've already risen at the sixth seal. So I'm definitely perplexed. Because when you go through this, the, the, the seven trumpets begin. The seventh seal gives you seven trumpets. And that's at the beginning of Revelation 8. And remember, at the last trump, we are all changed. When you go to Revelation 11, 15, and the church is only removed once. And I've always said they're telling you the same story in waves and layers. But they're connected by seals. Sixth seal seventh seal so it's like the sixth seal sixth seal tells you the it's like a wave and the seventh seal is another wave and the seventh angel sounded that's the seventh trumpet at the last trump and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world now become the kingdoms of our lord jesus christ and we will reign forever the church is removed again. I don't know how many verses there are in that 19. The four and 20 over set before God and worship God, give thanks. The nations were angry. God's wrath has come. So the sixth seal and seventh seal. Between eight and nine is the great tribulation. That's the fourth seal. The fourth seal is the great tribulation. It begins with World War III, but then it moves right into the abomination that causes desolation. So the fourth seal is the abomination, World War III. It's the four horses are all before that. Well, let me let me just let me let me retract that. The first seal is the rider on the white horse. Second seal is war. Third seal is famine. Fourth seal is death due to the war and the famine.
Yeah, fourth seal is World War Three. It's the fifth seal. It's in between the so the so by the fifth seal, you've already had the Great Tribulation. So the fourth seal gives you World War Three and the abomination that causes desolation. The fifth seal gives you the removal of the church. The sixth seal is the wrath of God. And the seventh seal are the seven trumpets that tell you the same story again. Having the seal of the living God and cry with a loud voice before him. Because the church is removed at 7 9. Because God's wrath didn't actually come yet. I said that's God's wrath. It's the beginning of God's wrath, the sixth seal. And then the church is sealed, and then the church is removed, and there's celebration in heaven. And then you go to Revelation 8, and you get the seventh seal, which gives you seven trumpets. And now you're going to get the story told again. It's Revelation 9, Beast of the Bottomless Pit. This is so layered, it's so deep. Revelation 10. I can't even remember much what that was about. I studied it and, and gave it on my, I think that's just dealing with the wrath of God in general, but it's kind of off to the side. Then you got the two witnesses, which is the removal of the church again. It's symbolic, and then set it towards heaven in a cloud. It's the removal of the church. Wrath of God. Revelation 12 goes off on its own and just tells a story about the church and Satan. And then you get the Revelation 13. It's the beast out of the sea, which is detailing what occurred at the fourth seal. Wow. Extraordinary. Anyway, if y'all watched yesterday, y'all saw that I, I became perplexed, and I have hope, hope that I've helped sort of explain a little bit about why did i read this second angel sounded was a great mountain burning with fire it cast into the sea the third part of the sea became blood the third part of the creatures which are in the sea and had life died and the third part of the ships were destroyed all of course in memory of the third part of the angels that fell and and the third angel sounded and there fell a great star from heaven burning as if it were a lamp and it fell upon a third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters in the name of the stars called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and men died of the waters because they were made bitter. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars, and the third part of them were darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. And I beheld again an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of other voices of the trumpet 
of three angels, which are yet to sound. <sighs> okay. Luke 7. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. For I also am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers. And I say unto one, go, and he goeth, and to another, come, and he cometh, and to my servant, do this, and he do it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him, and he turned to him and said, Unto the people of the I say unto you, I have not found a man with such great faith in Israel. Um, because the Jesus and this man were, 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 Jesus agreed to like heal this man's servant, I believe it was. And the man just stopped and said, you don't need to come to my house. I'm not worthy to have you in my home. You can heal him here. Say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. For I am also a man set under authority. I have under me soldiers. So, you know, he's telling the story. And they that were sent running to the house found the servant whole that had been sick. So he's healed. And it came to pass the day after that he went into the city called Nyan. Nyan? Nan, and many of his disciples went with him and much people. And when he came nigh into the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man cried out. Dead man, dead man. Carried, sorry, carried out. The only son of his mother. And she was a widow and much people of the city was with her. Again, this is all true stories. But what is it symbolizing? When you're born, you are dead. Sin is a leprosy. There's every different cure and every different thing Jesus is doing, casting out demons, no matter what it is, it's symbolic of when the Holy Spirit comes into you and gives you the breath of life. God's tracking you day one, of course. And why did the Illuminati have embarrassment rituals? Because God allows you to just embarrass yourself and you look back at your life after you've been called and completely pulled out of the world and you look at your past life and you go, who was that person? And God goes, yeah, that's the miracle. And it's only for the chosen few, all these people that think they're saved and they believe in free will and hell is eternal torment celebrating Christmas. Jesus will say, I never knew you. You can't fix you. Jesus has to do it. Convicts your heart. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, weep not. And he came and he touched the buyer bear and they that, and they that bear him stood still and he said, young man, I say unto thee, arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. And there came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God hath visited his people. Anyway, I love you all very much. Stay in touch.